it down to the south end of Roosevelt Island, which was Welfare Island until it was renamed in 1973, Roosevelt Island. We're going to the old smallpox hospital, built between 1854 and 1855. And uh, it's just about the only real ruin around New York City. So there's uh, actually a fair amount of security on the island. So we have to watch out not just for police cars, but also private security. Uh, the clock starts ticking as soon as we go in, and we can just look around for a little bit before we have to scoot out. So this place used to be a lot more dangerous because it used to actually be a small box hospital. Why it was built in the 19th century, mid 19th century, smallpox was just about the biggest killer in New York City. One out of every four people that got it died. Well, we're kind of between a rock and a hard place here because we don't want to be visible in the lights, but we don't want to be on the other side of the building because that's where the security trailer is. these giant holes in the floor. So be really careful when you're walking. I'll try to give you some light. You can walk on the main floor support. Okay. But be careful all the time because there's always a chance that the floor will fall through. We're in the central area of the hospital, the original part that was built. <laughs> Beautiful brickwork, a little bit disintegrated now. And then the wings were added later when they expanded the hospital. And more people kept on getting sick. It's a fireproof door made by the Century Fireproofing Company in Brooklyn, New York. That was back when New York actually made things. But here's the other cool thing, is this uh, lock right here. And the paupers here, who were also smallpox patients, were considered to be potentially wicked because why else would they be getting diseases, right? They didn't have wicked lives. So some of these quarantine hospitals, it's kind of hard to tell whether people are patients or prisoners. This is one of the front rooms. I figured this is as close to what a patient's room looked like as we can possibly get at this point. New cinder block walls that were added in to reinforce the structure. But mostly the old brick. Yeah, yeah, that was a door. A little closet built into the wall. Uh, used to be three floors total. There's maybe maybe 10 square feet left of the second floor at one of the ends now, and the rest is just gone. So this is all new, all this, uh, this stabilization, the metal framework they put in, this is all within the past six years or so. Kind of cool, it's very rare. The city put so much money into stabilizing an old ruin. So it's almost a shame that the whole thing is going to disappear when Cornell moves here with its new science and tech campus. The impressive thing is that this building has survived as long as it has. Uh, 
I think it's awesome. You, you don't get many places in New York where you can find, you know, this kind of urban wilderness. <laughs> One of the more impressive pieces of historic preservation I have ever seen. It takes a lot of money to take care of an old building. And this place has stood here abandoned for 60 years now. And you can see it going by on the FDR. You can see it, it's beautiful. And if you know the story behind it, it is a meaningful landmark. So this place has lasted for 157 years now. But this year might be its last. 